Welcome to Lunch with the Lord. I'm Pastor Mark. We'll be looking at Philippians chapter 4, starting at verse 18. But before we begin, Jeremiah 15, 16, Thy words were found, and I did eat them. And thy word was unto me the joy and rejoicing of my heart. Now, as we saw last lesson in verses 15, 16, and 17, Paul is recalling the time when he left Philippi and went and to Thessalonica and then Berea and then eventually got down into Corinth. And the Philippian believers continued their support of Paul on his missionary journey right from the very beginning. And he says in verse 17, not because I desire a gift, but I desire fruit that may abound to your account. And as we saw last lesson that Paul is saying, it's, it's not, thank, he says, thank you for the gift. Thank you for the gift, but it's, it's more than just the gift that I desire. What I really would like is that for you to be blessed by God. And, and, and that's what the mark of a true servant of God is, is that the people that you are ministering to, the people that you are giving your life to are blessed and that God really ministers unto their needs. Now in verse 18, he says here, but I have all and abound. I am full, having received of Epaphroditus the things which were sent from you, an odor of a sweet smell, a sacrifice acceptable, well-pleasing to God. Paul here says, but I have all. And the Greek word here is ap echo. And this Greek word was used to refer to the drawing up of a receipt. Okay, like you go and you buy something at a store and right after you pay, the cashier gives you a receipt that you paid for it. This is, this is proof that you paid for uh, these goods that you bought. And Paul is kind of saying that he is writing up a receipt for what they sent to him. And this same Greek word, ap echo, is also seen in Matthew chapter 6. So if we go back to Matthew chapter 6, and in verse 2 he says, Jesus said, Therefore, when thou dost, when thou dost thine alms, do not sound a trumpet before thee, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may have glory of men. Verily I say unto you, aha, the next part, they have their reward. Same Greek word, ap echo, they have their reward. Now in verse five, Jesus said, and when you pray, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets, that they may be seen of men. Verily I say unto you, here we are again, they have their reward, ap echo, they have their receipt. Now in verse 16, Jesus said, moreover, when you fast, be not as the hypocrites of a sad countenance, for they disfigure their faces that they may appear unto men to fast. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. Again, same Greek word, ap echo. And Jesus, Jesus said in these verses that the people who gave alms and the people who prayed and the people who fasted, and they did it for the praise and the glory of men, have signed a receipt for their reward already. They have their reward. They, these scribes and Pharisees that did these things, and they did it with the purpose of receiving praise and glory of men, Jesus said, they have their written receipt. When they stand before God, 
they will receive nothing from the hand of God because payment has already been made. Look how I prayed. Look how I gave alms, right? Look how I fasted. Doesn't that deserve something from you, God? God's going to say, sorry, you got your reward. You have your receipt. You got the praise and the glory of men. That's your receipt for what you did. Look for and desire only the payment that comes from the hand of God. Do not, do not. What did I say? I said, do not desire any form of payment that comes from this, this infected, decaying world system. Don't seek the praise of men, the glory of men for anything that you do in the work of God. If you do, if you're seeking the praise of men, the glory of men, God says, that's your receipt. You have it. You're getting nothing from my hand. Remember, this world and everything in it will pass away. It will pass away. The glory of men, the praise of men, anything you receive from this world system, it will pass away. Oh, I prayed and I gave alms. I gave all this money to the church. And what do I get for it? Oh, there it goes. Bye-bye. It's passing away. In the end, you're, there goes your reward right into the fire. God's going to take this heaven and this earth and he's going to set it on fire. He's going to purge it, burn it, cleanse it. All this, all the sin and corruption and all the, 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 the effects of 6,000 years of sin on this, uh, on this earth and in this universe, God's going to set it all on fire. He's going to burn it and cleanse it. Don't have your reward in anything from this world system. Let your heart, set your heart on God's rewards. Don't set your heart on anything from this world. What men can give you, praise, glory, possessions, whatever it is, money. Don't set your heart on those things. Set your heart on the rewards that come from God. Why? Because moth don't get there. No rust can affect God's rewards. Oh no, they're in heaven. There's no rust in heaven, no moths to eat away your clothes, <laughs> right? No, nothing's decaying, nothing rots, nothing burns in heaven. No, doesn't go away, but this world passes away. He says, but I have all and abound. Now, this Greek word for abound is parasio, paras, parasueo. And it means to abundantly furnish. And the Philippian church must have sent Paul a pretty good size gift. So he says, I have all and I, ab I have all that I need and I'm abounding in it. I'm abounding. He says, I have an abundance of, of what you sent to me. And then he says, I am full. And this phrase, I am full in the Greek is in the perfect tense. And by their gift, Paul is filled. Paul says, I don't need any more from you. You don't need to send me anything anymore. I have enough. I'm full. And I'm writing you a receipt that payment has been made. And this payment though, this, this receipt is going to the glory of God. God God's going to bless you tremendously with gifts in heaven with treasures in heaven, with his life, his, his mercy, his grace. All your treasure is going to be in heaven because of this gift that you gave me. And he says, I have all, I'm abounding, I'm full. <laughs> and I, and I have, he says, I, I, you don't need to send me anymore. I've got enough. And then he says here, I am full having received of Epaphroditus the things which were sent from you. And then he says, an odor of a sweet smell, a sacrifice acceptable, well-pleasing to God. An odor, an odor, 
a sweet smell, a sacrifice, acceptable, well-pleasing to God. Paul here is referring back to the Levitical sacrifices. He equates their gift to him as an Old Testament sacrifice made to God. Back in the Old Testament, uh, Jewish people, they would, they would sacrifice uh, bulls, goats, calves, lambs, and they would sacrifice them unto God for a certain purpose. They would offer it up unto God. And this is what Paul is saying, that your gift to me is like that. It's, it's an odor, a sweet smell, it, and it's well-pleasing unto God. And as, as they would offer up to God a sacrifice that was acceptable to God by giving Paul their gifts, so God would continue to provide all of their needs. And that's what we're going to get into in the next verse, that as we give unto the unto the work of God as we pour out of our life and we give to, to the church, as we send money to a missionary or we send gifts to a pastor or whatever, as we give to the work of God, the Bible says that there's a, a promise from God that he supplies our need also. As we, as we give to the work of God, but remember, in giving to the work of God, make sure you give it unto God. Yes, your gift is going to that pastor or that missionary. You're sending it. But when you give, when you give as a Christian, always give as unto God first and then give it unto the pastor, the missionary, the need, the, the need that they have. Always have in the back of your mind that this gift is a sacrifice unto God, a sweet smell, an odor unto God, and it's well-pleasing unto him. And as we do, God promises that he will supply our needs. All right, until next lesson, walk with the Lord. I know he walks with you.